G'day everyone, my name's Barney, and today what we're going to be doing is recreating this watercolor effect by Tyler Hobbs inside P5JS. I'm going to leave a link in the description to a video where Tyler is actually giving a talk about how this effect works. I really encourage you to go and check that out. He gives a great explanation on how this effect works. What I'm going to be doing today is a little different from my normal videos. I'm actually just going to walk through the code I've written to make his effect work inside P5JS. So again, go and check out his video and when you're ready, come back to this one and open up a code window. I'm going to leave a link in the description as well to all of the code for this so you can just read it along with me as I'm explaining it. The main bulk of this effect is done in a polygon class and we pass it in a bunch of vertices that define the shape that we want to draw as watercolor. And then when we actually draw it, we grow that polygon gradually and subdivide the segments of the polygon and create this sort of billowing cloudy effect that you get from watercolor. And you can see it yields some pretty realistic looking effects. So I'll just breeze through the sort of setup and draw functions and then we'll get into the polygon class in a minute. And that's where the main work is actually done for this effect. In the preload function, I'm loading in an image called paper.jpg. And as you can imagine, this applies a bit of a paper texture to the background to give it a more authentic feel, but obviously this isn't necessary at all. Then in the setup, I'm creating the canvas and I'm creating a vertex array that I'm gonna pass into my poly class. And I'm just populating this with some points around a circle. And at the moment I'm just drawing four points. So it's actually just a diamond. And then I create a new polygon with those vertices we've just created. And I've stored this poly as a global object so that I, I'm just drawing this one polygon. But obviously you could put these polys into an array and have heaps of different polygons that you're all drawing at the same time and have multiple shapes all using the watercolor effect. And then at the end, I'm calling the no loop function. And this just stops the draw function from being called multiple times. It only gets called once. And this works for me because I'm just generating a static image. I'm not doing any animations or anything. Then in the draw function, what I'm doing is I'm just drawing the background as a white color and then I'm overlaying it with an image of the paper and I'm using this tint function which I'm using to just reduce the opacity of the image that we're drawing. And then down the bottom of the draw function I'm calling the watercolor function which I pass in my poly and a color and it draws that polygon in the watercolor effect using the color that I've given it. And so now we're getting into the actual crux of it so this polygon class and it is a bit of a beast but once you break it down into the steps it's actually quite straightforward. So we'll break it down now. So the constructor takes in a list of vertices like we saw before when I was creating that new polygon and it can also optionally take in a list of modifiers. So each vertex will have a modifier associated with it and this just controls the growth rate of that vertices. So instead of the watercolor just spreading out at a uniform rate, some edges won't spread out as much and others will spread out more. So you can see in the example that I've got on the right here, these top two edges here haven't expanded as much as this bottom left edge. And that's because those modifiers will have reduced how much that edge can spread. So then inside the constructor, I'm just setting the vertices onto the object. And then if we don't have the modifiers, we actually generate some default modifiers for it. And the values that we give these modifiers is really gonna affect the outcome of this watercolor image. So at the moment, I've just got it selecting a random value between 0.1 and 0.8. I'm sort of capping it around that bounds of zero to one. But just to demonstrate what this value does, instead of using a random value, we can just pass in a static value. So if I give it a value of zero, this will mean that there's gonna be no spread at all. So when we run this, we just get a perfect diamond. And if I give it a value of one, it's gonna spread a lot in every direction and you can see you just get this sort of splotchy effect. And so this really demonstrates what these modifiers do. They they cap how much the spread can occur in any one direction and it sort of makes these regions of more spread and less spread which mimics that watercolor effect quite well. So then if we've needed to generate them, we can store them onto the modifiers, otherwise they'll just be the ones that we've passed in in the constructor being stored onto the object. So now we get to the grow function and this is where we actually subdivide all of our edges and grow them out and spread them over the canvas. And so the outcome of this function is actually a new polygon using these expanded grown edges. So in order to do that, we have a list of the grown vertices and a list of the grown modifiers. Then we loop through all of the vertices we've got in our current polygon. And you can see here, I'm also creating a J index. And what this is, is the next vertex along. And I've got it modulo the length of the vertices array so that once we get to the end, we actually loop back because we want this to be a continuous loop of vertices in a closed shape. So using those two indices, we can get a beginning vertex and an ending vertex. And we can also get the modifier associated with that starting vertex. I've also got this convenience function here called change mod, 
which will take in a modifier and output a slightly changed modifier. This also makes use of my random function, which still gives me a value between zero and one, like the normal random function if you don't give it any arguments, but it is biased towards 0.5. So it'll be sort of like a, a normal distribution centered around 0.5. So into our grown verts and modifiers, we can actually put in the starting vertex of this edge because we want to maintain all the vertices that we currently have, but we also want to add some in between this current vertex and the next one along. So we're subdividing each edge and then we're going to spread that edge a little bit as well. But we need to store the current vertex and its modifier after we've modified it a little bit. I then use the inbuilt P5 vector functions to subtract the end vertex from the start vertex. And this gives me a line segment that goes between the two vertices of this edge and we can use this segment now to generate a point somewhere along this line. So now we've got this line segment, I store the length of the segment and then I multiply it by our random function. And again, this goes between zero and one, but bias towards 0 0.5. So what the output of this will be is somewhere along the line between our beginning vertex and our end vertex, we will get our new vertex. and most of the time it'll be biased towards the very middle in between these two points, but sometimes it'll be a bit closer to the start and sometimes a bit closer to the end. And so our new vertex position is actually the addition of this line segment and our original starting vertex. The reason we have to do this addition is the line segment that we've got is actually relative to that beginning vertex. So we need to add them together to get the actual position on the screen that this vertex needs to be. And we store that position in this variable V. So this gives us a new vertex somewhere directly on the line between our two starting vertices, but we actually wanna push it out a bit and spread this vertex as well. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're going to take our line segment and we're gonna rotate it first by 90 degrees, but then shift it randomly in either direction a little bit. And so you can see here in the rotate function, I'm initially rotating it by well, negative 90 degrees, or minus pi on two radians. And then I'm randomly then shifting that either 45 degrees to the left or to the right. So it'll give me a 90 degree spread, but mostly it'll go straight out from our line segment. And then I'm setting the distance of that segment to be based upon the length of the original line segment. And then also this modifier. So this is where the modifiers come in to cap the amount of growth that we can have. And then I add this rotated and uh, shortened line segment onto our V variable. And this gives us our final position for this new vertex. And then we can push this new vertex into our grown vertices and we can use the modifier from the original start point and modify that again slightly and push that into our grown modifiers. So the modifier for this new vertex is actually based upon the modifier for the original start of this line segment. So you get these regions that all have the same modifier and this is what allows this effect of some sections being a more straight line and others being really billowy and cloudy. So by the end of this for loop, we're left with a list of new vertices and modifiers, and it's got all of the original polygons, vertices and modifiers in there interspersed with some new ones that have been randomly placed along each edge of the polygon and pushed out a little bit depending on the modifier. And so we can then use these to create a new polygon and return this from our grow function. I've also got a draw function, which simply just begins a shape and loops over all of the vertices in its vertex array and creates a vertex for them and closes that shape at the end. And it doesn't do any colors or anything like that because that's all handled inside the watercolor function because we wanna be able to control the opacity. And speaking of the watercolor function, that's up next. So it takes in a polygon and a color and we first define a number of layers. Now we need this number of layers because we're actually gonna draw the polygon onto the screen multiple times using the grow function to make it slightly different each time and layer these on top of each other. So you can see here in the fill function, I'm actually deconstructing the color that we get in and reading its red, green, and blue values individually. And then I'm defining the opacity of the color based on this number of layers that we've got. So each individual layer is actually quite see-through, but because we're building up layer after layer, it becomes quite an opaque color. And you can see here, I'm also turning off the stroke because we're drawing 50 of these polygons, so we don't want these lines everywhere. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm breaking down the number of layers into different sections. So I've actually got three sections here. And so the first section, we take the polygon and we grow it a few times. So we've got the same random base that we're starting from. And then inside this for loop, each time I'm using that base polygon and growing it once more to give it a slight random variation from that base and drawing that a bunch of times. But then once we have hit 
one third of the way through our number of layers, I grow it twice more. So this will give us a new, more random base to work from. And then again, once I've hit two thirds of the way through, we grow it twice more, and this gives us another random base. So I've just commented out the section where we grow that base polygon at one third of the way through and two thirds of the way through our layers. And you can see that the variation that we get from our watercolor effect has been drastically reduced. And that's because we're not actually growing it that many times. We've grown it twice at the start to get our random variation for the base and then once more for each layer that we're drawing. But so we're only getting three levels of grow for each of these layers that we're drawing on. So by including this code where we grow that base polygon, we get a lot more variation and growth from this effect. So this is absolutely something that you can play around with yourself. So I've always just got it having three different sections to the layers and I'm always growing it twice for each of these sections, but you could play around with how many layers there are and also how you're growing them each time they hit one of these new sections. This is the RAND function that we were using when we were growing the polygon. And as you can see, it just calls the distribute function after it's created a random value between zero and one. And the distribute function is something that I stole from the internet somewhere and it just approximates a normal distribution between zero and one. Thank you so much for watching this much of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Definitely go and check out Tyler Hobbs video on this effect because it is a really great video and he goes really into depth in how he's created this effect. I've just taken his idea and I've recreated it inside P5JS. So please go and check that out. I'll leave a link in the description and I will also leave a link in the description for this exact code so you can play around with it and try out some of those things I was suggesting. So try playing around with how these shapes are grown, play around with the shapes you're actually drawing. You could even try animating this effect so you can watch the watercolor grow over time as well. So be sure to check it out and play around with it. And if you have any questions or queries, let me know in the comments. YouTube reckons you'd like this video next, and otherwise there's a playlist here with all of my other P5JS videos in it, so you can become a code wizard in no time. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.